Good morning, Avon. Thanks for your time. I've been following your career for quite a while, and I know you started at the Hausier Institute working with one of my heroes, Manny Don. And uh, by the time you left the Hausier Institute, you were the director of the children's program. After that, you were at uh, UCLA uh, in the Department of Head and Neck Surgery, and you were a professor there. But what I'd like to speak about today is to focus in on evoked potentials, and I'd like to talk more about how we can decrease the recording time and increase some quality. So let's talk about how do we optimize or minimize the quantity of recording needed for an excellent recording. Good question, Doug. Um, and my experience with this comes from working with Manny Don for so many years, as well as Klaus Elberling. Uh, who developed some of the techniques that are now being implemented in, in some of the newer machines. Um, the amount of averaging that needs to be done uh, is not known ahead of time when we start to do a recording. And in the past, people have always used just a s set number of sweeps. Oh, we'll do a thousand sweeps or we'll do two thousand sweeps. Sure. That doesn't take advantage of all the information that's there. So there's a new technique called FMP, uh, and MP stands for multiple points. And uh, the way it works is that during each sweep, there's uh, multiple points are put into uh, a buffer and then continually um, uh, averaged for the variance in those points. And in the case of the inner acoustics machine, they use 21 points during the averaging. Um, the, that information goes into determining how much noise is in the response. And as you might imagine, uh, in any particular sweep, uh, there can be a high level of noise or a low level of noise. When you see lots of noise in a response, then the EEG will jump up and down. Sure, so from yeah. each sweep, you get lots of variance across those points. The contribution, though, from the evoke potential should always be the same, and so it doesn't really contribute to the variance. So the variance calculation can give us an estimate of how much noise is going into our recording. I see. At the same time, the machine will, after about 200, 250 sweeps or so, will stop and do an average of all those sweeps. And that gives us an idea of how much evoke potential as well as how much noise is in the response. But by dividing out by the noise, we can get an estimate of how much evoke potential is there, what the signal to noise ratio is. It's not exactly the signal to noise ratio, it's a good estimate of the signal to noise ratio. And that's that FMP value. The system will plot these values for you as the averaging is going on. So you can see if your response is growing in amplitude, as it should, if the noise is being reduced. You can see how much noise is in your recording um, and know at any particular time how well you're doing at keeping the baby quiet, for example. And if you do have, actually have a response there, you'll see the growth of the FMP value. And that's, that's valuable in and of itself. If there's no response, the FMP doesn't grow. It simply stays static. It's just noise. And if you see a slow growth, you may be able to realize that you're going to reach a threshold if you average long enough. Um, you can set values to stop your recording. I can say, once I reach an FMP that gives me a confidence of a response, I'm going to stop. It doesn't matter what the noise is. Or, if I never reach that, I may want to stop when I know the background noise has been reduced enough. If it was there, I would see it. So that's how you can optimize uh, the amount of, of sweeps you use. If you have a great big EP and low noise, you may only need four or 500 sweeps in order to be able to be certain of a response. If you have a very small response near threshold, uh, you may have to average much longer to be certain of a response. So you spend your time averaging where you need to and not where you don't need to, rather than simply using a thousand sweeps for every recording. That's great, Avon. So we can reduce the quantity to what we need uh, without having excessive recording time. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. So what can you tell me about enhancing the quality of the recording? Well, the uh, FMP value itself is an estimate of the quality of the response. And uh, for threshold measurements, as I was just me mentioning, we would 
uh, simply average until we can be certain there's a response. But if you want to average until you see a very clean, quiet response, for example, in neurologic applications, you want to be able to measure the latencies and the amplitudes very accurately. So you want the highest quality response. You could set the FMP value to 10 or even 20 and continue averaging until you have that quality of response. Uh, you can't know that, though, otherwise. Um, and if you wanted to compare two averages, you might want to compare them when they have the same quality uh, uh, or signal-to-noise ratio in the response.